Communications. Welcome to a special webinar we have this morning called 180 Skills, 21st Century Skills Training for Indiana Employers. We're pleased that you all have joined us this morning. Just a couple of uh, housekeeping items before we get the webinar off and running. Um, first of all, you should have two different audio options in your control box, computer audio or phone. Um, both should work fine, um, but if you notice any issues that you're having, you might want to switch from one to the other. Usually phone is a little bit better, um, but like I said, they both should be fine, and hopefully that'll be the case throughout today's webinar. Also in your control box, you'll notice a question tool. Uh, feel free to submit questions. We do encourage questions from the audience. Um, let's go ahead and type those in and submit them if you would like. Um, we may try to get to some of them throughout the program, but there'll also be time at the end uh, for some questions after the main part of the presentation. And if there's any questions remaining, uh, after that, our presenters will also get the questions and we'll be able to answer them offline. Um, finally, this uh, webinar is being recorded uh, and everyone who registered uh, will get a link to the recording about 24 hours from now. And that'll include uh, both the slides that you're going to see as well as the audio commentary. So uh, encourage you to go back and look at that if you missed anything. Um, again, that will be in your inbox about this time tomorrow. So with that, I would like to introduce our two presenters. First, we have Joe Kitterman, who's the CEO and founder of 180 Skills. And also joining him today, LaDonna Sloan, Implementation Specialist for 180 Skills. I'll turn it over to Joe and we'll get the program started. Joe, it's all yours. Yeah, thank you, Dave. And thank you everyone for attending today. I'm really grateful to have you spend your time with us on something we think is really important and valuable for you. So a little um, overview of what, it, what we're going to cover today. Um, going to be a very tactical presentation today about a resource that is available and free and uh, a bit of a medium dive into how you make that reality if you're interested in using it. So going to stay focused on those two things. And so I want to start off with just a clear definition of why we're here today. So uh, State of Indiana in June of 2021 engaged us as a company to make available to 100,000 Hoosiers um, access to a library of skills training courses that I will explain to you today. But I want to be clear, this is free to all Indiana employers. And the goal of this initiative was and continues to be to help Indiana companies create skilled workers, grow those skilled workers, and most importantly, retain those skilled workers. And again, everything we're going to talk about today is absolutely free as a, a resident Indiana employer. So I'm going to cover a little bit about who we are. I'm sure many of you may not know of us. Uh, we are 180 Skills. We are based in Indianapolis, Indiana. We have offices in Intech Park on the northwest side of Indianapolis. Uh, but since 2009, we have been working and growing what we believe to be the largest library of skills training courses on earth for manufacturing, logistics, and industrial sectors. So as a company on a day-to-day -day basis, um, so you understand our business model, we seek employers and work directly with employers actually globally now, helping them create, grow, retain their skilled workforces. We actually founded this company to help community and technical colleges, and we have over 100 community and technical college partners today who on your behalf are training up the next generation of skilled workers. We're also part of the federal workforce system in 10 states today. So like in Indiana, we're helping states serve <clears throat> displaced workers, exiting veterans, at-risk youth, people in adult basic ed programs and other workforce agency services. Kind of secondary, we have partnerships I'll discuss with some predominant industry associations, helping them serve their association members. And then we also engage with a wide variety of nonprofits 
for whom their focus is skills training, education, helping low-income marginalized people get great middle skills jobs. So those are our basic primary customers day to day. At present, um, just so you kind of understand the impact, we are currently serving over 250,000 learners in North America. So we've grown exponentially over the years, and um, I think it speaks to the value that a large array of customers see in our skills training library. We have a presence in North America in 34 states today. <clears throat> And the industries that we serve has really expanded. So we serve the aerospace manufacturing industry. We are the pipeline builder for companies like the Boeing Company, Hawker, Cessna, Learjet, Bombardier, Honda Aircraft, Spirit Aerosystems, and a wide variety of others. We are the trainer of choice. We work in the automotive sector with large tier ones and small suppliers, suppliers of all type, but our content is a great fit for machining, assembly, fabrication. We now have content for power generation and distribution, so we serve energy production companies. We are serving the food processing industry. We have content today to help uh, partners in the hospitality industry, in particular those that have really been hurt badly over the last 18 months in terms of loss of workforce. We have always had content around logistics and have worked closely with Conexus Indiana to develop content for the logistics industry, general manufacturing of all types, commercial and others. We have content. Uh, we have content now for retail industry. And we're now also starting to build content that's appropriate for the telecommunications industry. So it's a, a broad swath of industry that we serve. And a couple things that um, I want to make sure everyone here clearly understands. The library that I'm going to present to you today that you have access to was authored by industry. So um, I will share with you some of my manufacturing background, but we don't bring that in the building. We will not build a course without an industry partner involved who's providing subject matter expertise, and in particular, expertise that's aligned to a real middle skills job that's out there today. So we've been really fortunate to have companies like the Boeing Company, Hawker Honda, Spirit, GKN, Stanley Black & Decker, Harley Davidson, and others help author this library. And so you can rest assured that we're not bringing you courses that are based upon some antiquated knowledge we may have as ex-industry people. We're bringing you relevant content created by peer companies just like yours. From the association perspective on the bottom row, <clears throat> we are proud to be the training engine for the Association for Rubber Manufactured Products the Industrial Fasteners Institute, which represents all companies who make fasteners of all types, the Food Processing Suppliers Association, and Precision Metal Forming Association in Cleveland, who serves companies who stamp, form, uh, make anything from sheet metal or metal fabrication. So kind of so you understand, you know, this is not a test. This is not a pilot. We've been doing this a long time. We've now delivered over 38 million pages of content, uh, so almost 17 million test questions. And at present, our completion and placement rates are above 90%. And then other states that we're currently serving in initiatives like this include the state of Connecticut, where we're working with the governor and the workforce system to serve Connecticut manufacturers. The city of Las Vegas, we're serving the hotel and hospitality industry. We are a partner in New York City with their small business services to help manufacturers create, grow, and retain skilled workers, Piedmont Triad region. Um, the cities of Houston, Texas, and Dallas, Texas, which collectively have a service area of almost 12 million residents. And then we're also serving the state of Mississippi in a similar statewide initiative 
to help employers, community colleges, and the workforce system. So why do we do this? Um, I want to take a moment and share, you know, how we got here, why I started this company. This is my second online education technology company on behalf of manufacturing. I've been doing this since 2000, but I spent the first 22 years of my career uh, in automotive and aerospace manufacturing. I started life at the age of 19 as a failed college student. Uh, working at what used to be Allison Gas Turbine here in Indianapolis as a machinist, um, escalated through Allison's to a general management position, and then left to go out into the tier one supply world. So I have a huge passion for people who work. I love working with production workers. I love what they represent. I love trying to change their lives and improve them. And over that career, I have experienced workforces in every uh, cultural setting in North America. So I've helped establish new plants in downtown Detroit, where the mission was to transition Hispanic gang members into productive tier one automotive manufacturing employees. I've worked in the South, I've worked in the West, I've worked in rural areas in Indiana and Michigan. So I have seen and encountered every type of skilled and unskilled worker that there is. And um, through that experience, um, as a plant manager, as I know many of you are on the call today to address, my job was training. So it didn't matter what time of day, 24 seven, my job was constantly, how do I take someone at the front door who is willing to work and has absolutely no skills and get them through the front door and into an open position I need filled and then once I got them to that point, how do I get them to stay? And so this may resonate with many of you, but I talk about the promise I made to skilled workers. And, you know, I would meet someone, they wanted a job, they had no skills, it's fine, you know, we can get you skilled into an entry level production technician job. Normally not that complicated, but I would then make them a promise that stick with me and sometime in the future you'll get more skills because we'll make sure you get them and when that happens we'll pay you more money and i was never able to live up to that well-intentioned promise so my life was every single day some employee coming up and saying hey boss i'm ready to learn which meant i want some training so that i can make more money so that i can take better care of my family or do things in my personal life that i'm trying to achieve and as most of you know, in a manufacturing environment that's running 24 seven, there's always 17 other more important issues. And the truth was I in no way, shape or form ever had a full library of training courses that addressed all the technologies inside of my amazing manufacturing plant. And so typically I would say, oh, not today, you know, well, I'm, I'm busy, I've got a machine down, we'll get back to you. And Seldom did I actually deliver on that process. And if you don't, within some reasonable period of time, those employees will leave you for a nickel dime quarter and then you're back to the beginning of the story. The second reason I do this is when I was able to accomplish some semblance of training, for me in the manufacturing environment, I had two options. I could take a group of workers, employees, both salaried and hourly, I could hold a classroom session, I could engage or hire a consultant or a community college teacher to come to my plant and run a class. Um, most of the plants I had didn't have rooms that would hold more than 10 or 15 people, so classroom size was limited. But the bigger challenge, as you all know, pulling five or 10 or 15 people off of a production floor is uh, almost an act of Congress. The jobs they have must continue to be done while they're vacating them and in training. You have to schedule overtime, people staying over, people coming in early. You disrupt 30 other employees' lives by getting them to cover that employee's work assignment. Um, the second option I had was on the job training. So I could put employee A with employee B and let them spend some specified or unspecified amount of time together. And in both cases, the outcomes were never measurable. 
So classroom training is time-based. And what I saw in those events was I could put employees in a room for 40 hours. And at the end of 40 hours, the instructor would pass around a sheet asking, you know, how do you like me as a teacher? So I would get a smile sheet about the instructor's performance. But never once did I get a piece of paper that said these 15 employees have reached a level of mastery that's acceptable. They've passed a test. Um, never. So it was time based. And what I saw was blank stares. My employees were self conscious. They didn't ask questions. They didn't engage. They sat through a time based event, left the room with whatever they were able to garner from that event. And I had to ask myself as a plant manager, you know, um, I'll pick on LaDonna. LaDonna, I know she's not at 50% mastery, and I'm going to let her go back out and run a $3 million piece of equipment. You know, not a good situation. And on the job training is equally, can be equally as ineffective. I put two employees together. First, I hope they like each other, they will talk to each other. And then, second, I hope that the employee I'm, I'm tasking with training actually has knowledge, knows the correct terms, knows things uh, in a correct format. And again, most OJT events that I saw were two people hanging out for a few days, and I just kind of put closed my eyes and hoped that some knowledge transferred. If that piece of equipment ran extremely well for those few days, probably not a lot learned. If it happened to uh, misbehave and have a lot of issues, then there was you know significant amount of knowledge gained. But again, variable so many things that impact the quality of that event and it's just not a good plan for the long haul. So I want to tell you what that drove me to do. So I discovered computer and web-based training in the year 2000. Uh, I was running a tier one plant in Detroit and I was so moved by the thought that if I had self-paced mastery-based training in my building 24 hours a day, seven days a week, which is most of your worlds, so that when anything happened, somebody quit, somebody was sick, somebody needed to move up, I could have training on demand. The day the employee said, hey boss, I'm ready to learn, great, here's five classes you need to complete. And most importantly, and I'll continue to, to, to touch on this today, time was not the measure. So okay, employee, you want to take training, here's a class, go take it when you're done, there's a test, you're going to need to pass it when you pass it, come see us. And, you know, it didn't matter if the employee was extremely skilled and could finish that training event in 30 minutes, or they weren't and they needed eight hours, you know, the outcomes were always the same. So I walked away from what was uh, a really good job on a mission to change the way manufacturing training is delivered. So what you have access to today, I'm gonna to shift to the specifics now, is a skills training system. So we have skills courses, we have a learning management system platform for you to deliver them on in a safe and private manner. Every skills course has a test, we have created student study guides, PDF documents for the learners to help them with those assessments. And then we've taken it one step farther than anyone else in that we have created instructor training plans that I'll share with you so that if you have a student with digital knowledge and skills only who is going to need hands-on training, which is always the case, you don't have to figure out what we teach we have a work instruction aligned with each and every course that you can use to perform hands-on training events. And then we also maintain 13 industry-recognized certification exams. So the library itself, um, good news, bad news, it's big. It's 780 skills courses. It's a lot to digest. Um, but it's also great in that there is a super wide variety of content that I think applies to every employer on the call today, manufacturing, commercial, office-based. Um, so we've worked really hard to grow this library. And we are competency-based, everyone. And if that's not a term that you're familiar with, 
Um, it means that each and every course is a single unit of learning, one module or maybe think one chapter, on average an hour or less in duration, teaches one single skill. <clears throat> they are all asynchronous or don't require a teacher and they are all self-paced. So we're bringing to you what I like to call a big bucket of Lego skills. And I'll talk about how you use those in a moment, but back to the testing and the epiphany I had that I was letting I know, employees who were at 80% mastery go run a $3 million piece of equipment. Um, every course has a test and we require the student to score 100% to get an achievement. And on first blush, that might seem kind of harsh and kind of difficult. And oh my gosh, you know, my employees would never do that. Quite the opposite. The lower the skill of the learner, the more they want to get an A. And what makes this 100% pass mark a beautiful thing is that um, the students I described who would sit in a training session and say nothing because they don't want their coworkers to know they're not getting it. They don't want to be uncool. They don't want to be perceived as academically, you know, insufficient. Those learners love this because they're in private. They're by themselves. There's nobody watching. And so we draw questions from a larger pool. We deliver a subset to the learner. We randomize the questions and the choices. They cannot cheat but we don't let them go until they've had an attempt at that exam that has a 100% pass mark. And, you know, I'll continue to emphasize the lower the skill of your learners or the more classroom self-conscious they are, they love this. And the learners like to get an A and they want to know and they don't want to be knowledge insufficient and so trust me, this has been one of the best things that we ever did on behalf of the learners and the sponsoring employers. So back to the library of 780, to make it easier for everyone to digest, we've subdivided it into four major categories. The first category is workplace and soft skills. We have a category now on risk management and compliance a standalone category on quality and continuous improvement, and then the bulk of the library resides in our technical skills. <clears throat> so as you think about this bucket of Legos, and I'll describe how you can do this, it can easily be organized with laser focus to your job descriptions, to college academic curricula for incumbent worker training, compliance training or just broader organizational goals. So the workplace and soft skills group is almost imp as important now as the technical library. Across the board in every single sector on earth right now, one in three requirements on a job description are in this category. So the world isn't satisfied with me knowing how to operate a piece of equipment. They also want me to be a great team player and a communicator and a presenter. And so this group um, includes 171 unique skills. The top row is what I would describe as basic workplace soft skills, communication, customer service, stress management, team building, time management. You need your employees to be collaborators, communicators, team players. Then we move into what I described as advanced workplace skills, critical thinking, problem solving, project management. We have an entire suite now on Microsoft Office, starting with, I have no idea and I've never seen this software, I don't know what it does, to advanced levels that are being used uh, by corporate partners in accounting departments, administrative positions, engineering positions, so from beginner to advanced in Word, Outlook, PowerPoint and Excel. On behalf of the learners, we have a category we call personal development. We do serve the workforce system and college partners, so we have a great suite of courses on career building for first-time job seekers, so they know how to find you employers, how to present themselves to you employers, how to communicate with you. Uh, we also have a great suite of courses on personal finances that would be good for all of your employees. It's Ramsey-based. 
but in particular, um, I'll go back to my life as a plant manager. A lot of my employees didn't have great money management skills and they got themselves in trouble or we'd be over time flush for two or three months and they'd go out and buy something they couldn't afford and then the overtime would stop and they'd be in big trouble. Um, this is a great suite of courses that starts at the very, very basics. What is compensation? What are tax deductions? What is a bank account? What is a credit score? You know, why you should care, how you manage, all the way up through retirement planning. And then the bottom row, uh, again, goes back to my plant management days. It's basic skills that you need them to have in math, geometry, and we also have courses on how to study and be a good learner. But I had math assessments done in my plants, and every time I just shook my head. Um, so rather than do that, we have content that starts in second grade with addition subtraction, takes them up through algebra, basic geometry through transformational. So, um, you know, closing this slide, this is good for everyone in the plant, front office, back office, every industry sector in the state. Picking Joe, could I jump in a question real yeah. quick? Sure. Uh, one just came in. Under the customer service category, is there a specialized subject on civil service for government employees? No, we do not cover that. I'm sorry. Um, we could certainly look at developing it um, if there's a demand. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right, I'll pick up the pace a bit here. Um, in the category of risk management, things that you all have to teach now, the world's a different place and we're better for it, but teaching discrimination, diversity, we have 35 OSHA health and safety modules, sexual harassment, workplace violence. Um, these are regulatory and we have the content now for you. Uh, quality systems, Lean and Six Sigma. I know all of you practice these. We have a full suite on Lean quality systems that will train your newly hired unskilled employee why a system like ISO or TS-16949 is important, what their role is, why they should be excited that the world operates to these quality systems. And then we have a full Green Belt Six Sigma program we co-authored with Purdue University here in Indiana. And then the technical library, everyone. This is 526 discrete courses. These are categories not course titles. So in each of these badges, we have from five to 80 courses, depends upon the topic. We are constantly growing this part of the library, but I think we probably cover 80 to 90% of manufacturing in North America, machining, assembly, welding. We have a rigorous curriculum we built with SMC International on industrial maintenance, which includes electrical, hydraulics, pneumatics, robotics, automation. Um, so we can help you build your next generation industrial maintenance techs. Um, logistics on the aerospace side, aerospace manufacturing, sheet metal fabrication, electrical work, composite manufacturing, or carbon fiber. Um, we have a great suite of entry level welding courses that we built uh, with Lyft in Detroit. So I would encourage you to take a look through our course catalog. Again, this is 526 courses. And we also have a full pre-apprenticeship tool making program that we built with the Boeing company. Um, that's pretty effective if you're looking to grow um, tool and die makers. So I mentioned the instructor training plans. I wanted you to see what those look like. We we are still manufacturers at heart. These are work instructions. They're built for you to be to easily use them. Anyone in your organization can take um, the work instruction and a learner, and it tells that teacher or trainer what the learner learned in the online course, what the objectives of that course were, and then preparing to meet the students' questions to ask the student materials or practice things that they need to get to perform in hands-on training activities. So again, you don't have to figure anything out about what we're teaching. We've got you covered on this. So one of the big questions we get, especially from manufacturers, is how on earth do you teach technical topics online? And it's a legitimate question, um, but 
we have a very unique methodology that I think engages the learners, drives our 90% completion rate. And what you're looking at is a sample page from one of our robotics course. But what I want to cover is how we get the learners to love online learning. So let's start with, we do not do video. Video is boring, it's passive. The learner has nothing to do but sit and watch. If they miss something in a video, they have to rewind it and listen to it again and rewind it. So we don't do that. These are truly self-paced. Fast, you know, smart learners can go very quickly. People who need time have more, but the basics are we never fill more than a third of the page with reading. We don't wanna bore the student and we don't wanna overwhelm them. So each page is a single topic. Every visible word is narrated and every narrated word is visible. So if you have ESL challenges or disabilities compliance that you need to align with, no problem. We meet those and we help our ESL learners, but two thirds of the page or more is always dedicated to a colorful vector-based, CAD-based, interactivity, simulation, animation, emulation, something for the student to do to get them truly engaged in the content. There's never a scroll bar in our courses, so your learners won't be afraid of where the bottom of the page is. And all of our courses look like this. So um, that's not just a sample of one really cool course. We have invested over $35 million building this library and every single page is engaging. And I think, again, that's what drives our completion rates. So you can teach technical skills online effectively. And the soft skills, same thing. We don't do videos of me <clears throat> yelling at LaDonna and call that soft skills training. We go full Disney Pixar, character-based animations, interactivities. We try to get the learners to enjoy the learning, to chuckle, to laugh but most importantly, get engaged in the skills acquisition process. So I'd like to show you real quickly live content about how we teach. So we do get asked, how do you teach a technical device in an online environment? Um, there is a basic methodology that we use that separates a device, a piece of equipment from, you know, how to use it so back to the real world ojt i'm with a new i'm with a, the new employee with, with an incumbent worker i'm standing in front of a piece of equipment i've never seen they're pushing buttons opening doors doing things telling me about those as they do it the machines running it's information overload so we separate a device a piece of equipment from what you know we tell them what it is first and then how to use it in all of our courses, everything is interactive. The students can touch and feel and play. <clears throat> but in this example, simple measurement tool, um, this is how we teach. Page one, dear student, what's a height gauge? Well, guess what? It's used to measure vertical distance. Again, everything is functional. Page two, we show them some examples of different styles they might see in the workplace. But our pedagogy, by page three or four is, okay, dear student, let's get to it. This device has six major components and we're going to teach you about each one. Component number one, and in each case we teach what is it, what's it for, and why you should care. But I'm gonna fast forward through this. Component number two, component number three has seven pieces of its own, so we stay here for a while. And not until they've learned every piece, part, button, bell, whistle, and switch at the end of this module do we then teach them tasks. So the separation of tasks from knowledge about the device is essential. When we get to the task, the focus is the task. Why do you need to do this task? Why is this task important? And how to properly perform it. So again, not much time today, but I hope that makes sense. The separation of the two is essential. Trying to do them both at once is information overload. On something much more complicated like a machine tool, same pedagogy, page one, dear student, you're gonna learn about a horizontal lathe. What the heck is that? 
and a gentle 50,000 foot walk around, look under the covers, and then by page four, a simple definition of CNC, what that means, and on page five, just like the measurement tool, dear student, this device has 16 major systems on the inside and four on the outside. And now let's begin to walk through those systems, the foundation, the headstock, and at each one, we stop and take a dive into that, what it does, how it operates. So I hope that's meaningful. And the soft skills, I'll jump quickly. As I said, this is a conflict resolution course we wrote with the Boeing company. And it's really awesome with the characters and the animations while teaching college level conflict resolution skills. So I'm going to jump back to my presentation now. And in Indiana, over the last 18 months, we have engaged several hundred employers. And I just wanted to share with you, the employers who have engaged are enjoying a 90% completion rate as of last week. So I'm gonna fast forward through this, everybody, in the interest of time. It's what I was just talking about how we teach, but let me close you know, the importance of online learning and manufacturing, maybe the most important reason is it takes less time. So with you know, 20 years of experience, we have demonstrated that uh, a 40 hour lecture based class can be taught in 16 to 24 hours in online. There's no interruptions, there's no lecture, there's no discussion, there's no breaks. So in the interest of time, which is always paramount to manufacturers and to all businesses, this simply takes less time and is more effective. So I'm gonna get tactical now on how to get started. So should you decide you wanna do this, first thing I wanna let you know is um, it's super, super easy. So we have a learning management system platform for those of you on the call who do not have a learning management system. If you do, we can deliver the content to your system and we can talk to you offline. That's also a very easy process. But for those of you who don't, we have an SAP platform that we use. We love it, it's incredibly simple. There's only four things you can do here. Control your users, create new content if you like, access our library and run reports on the results. So we chose this platform because it is easy, it's intuitive. You will not have to hire a full-time person to manage using our library. But to get started, I'll go back to 780 courses is a lot, and don't let that look like a sheer cliff that you can't climb. You can start very simply with very, very little investment in time. It's really up to you. And I'm gonna share with you the three ways that you can use our library. So we have skills courses, the 780, for you and on behalf of you, we have grouped those into some groups I'll share with you. And then most of our employer clients go with option three, where they're building customized learning paths, and I'll explain that to you here. So the skills courses, again, that's the 780. Each one teaches a single topic. If you have a learner who needs a skill today, it's super simple, create a user account, assign them to those skill courses and you're done. In our course catalog, if you look at it, skill courses, each of these lines is a standalone skill course. So in this example, this is some measurement tools. Um, you know, an employer on the call today might use calipers and micrometers and bore gauges and another employer might use um, small hole gauges and thickness and radius gauges. So if you want to align with what you're doing in your plant or in your operation, pick and choose skill courses, it's easy. Skill groups are groups of courses that we've created so that if you don't want to do the pick and choose single skills, and here's an example of an Excel class. So if you have somebody who doesn't understand Excel, we don't want you to have to enroll them in six different courses. You can just enroll them in Excel Basics and they'll get five courses in their um, assignments and you're done with one single click. So again, single courses, if you have discrete things, if you want them to learn about a topic like Excel 
or I'll go back up here if you just wanted them to learn what we call precision measurement one and that's good enough for you, you can enroll them in measurement 201 and they're automatically enrolled in four courses. So the third methodology is customized learning paths. So when I talked about the bucket of Lego skills, most of our employers have very discrete, unique training needs. No two are the same, that's no problem. They take our library and drag and drop it into what we call a learning path. A learning path is just a group of courses that you select. And this sample learning path here on the right is from GKN Aerospace. They do CNC machining. And for them to onboard a new employee to be a CNC production technician, this is what they need. So they wanted them to have a teamwork skill. They wanted them to have six OSHA training classes, but not a full OSHA 10. They want them to know about OSHA, how to make work safe, what to do in an emergency, and then three discrete pieces of personal protective equipment. So, you know, for PPE in general, eye and face and hearing protection. So why waste the student's time teaching them about all the other forms of PPE if it's not required in your plan? For CNC, they wanted them to understand the machine, how it moves, the controller, because a production technician really doesn't need to know much more. Five or four blueprint reading courses and five precision measurement tools. So this is just a simple drag and drop activity that you can do in two minutes and you've got a customized learning path aligned with a role in your company. You also get a private team space on our learning management system. So each employer has a private sandbox that you control <clears throat> and you can organize your learning in teams. So in this simple chart, work team one, two, and three, these have courses inside of them. So if you have a program like I just described incumbent worker, entry level worker level one, you can assign 14 courses to this team you hire a new employee tomorrow, you create a user account, you make them a member of that team, and you're done. They're automatically enrolled in all those courses. When they're ready to move up, you make them a member of team number two. It may have some more advanced classes. And with one click, they're already enrolled in that next suite of courses, and your job is done. Teams can be as complicated as you like. You can have administration at each level. You could have somebody in the plant who's overseeing the whole company. You may have departments. And each of these on the second level can have their own admin. You can take a first line supervisor and make him an admin. He can add and subtract employees, build his own learning paths. And I wanna show you quickly live what this looks like. So this is our learning management system. This is one of our Indiana companies called TrueFlex. And after a one hour implementation meeting, they went off on behalf of their company. And so TrueFlex has their own private space and then they created training by department. And I'm gonna go all the way to the left. They created a team for continuous improvement with learning paths for that, customer service. IT, human resources, machining, maintenance. So each of these grandchild teams has content in it for manufacturing, including utility, warehouse, operators, managers, supervisors. And then going to the right side of center, they organized our Lego skills for their administrative staff, including CEO, VPs, their accounting team, sales team, shipping team, safety team, quality team. So this is an extreme example of what you can do, but this was all done in less than one day by TrueFlex, by their employees. Again, just dragging and dropping content into functional roles in the plant. So it's another company that we have in Nebraska. Um, they organized it by first line supervisors in their CNC machining and then all the administrative departments. And then the good news is if you want to get started, 
it's a one hour meeting that you need to attend. So LaDonna, our implementation specialist is on the phone today. All you need to do is commit to a one hour meeting. And in that one hour, we're gonna teach you how to use our learning management system. And again, there's only four things you can do at create or deactivate users, create courses. If you have content PowerPoint videos that you use, upload them to our system and make them part of your offering, it's fine. Create teams, number three, that I just showed you, learning teams. And the fourth one is reporting. We have a rigorous reporting engine. We'll help you set those reports up to the information that you need. We'll help you automate those so that they arrive by email on a specified date and time, you know, daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly. But in that one hour, the first half is how to use the LMS. And the second half, um, LaDonna and her team will teach you about the library, review what you saw today, what courses are available, you know, how to create customized learning paths. But in one hour, you can be up and running and offering training to an organization of five or an organization of 5,000. There, you know, the process is just as simple either way. And I want to share with you what the state is giving out for free. So we sell our product on a subscription basis day to day, nationwide, globally. And the minimum investment a company has to make to engage is $4,800, $96 per user per year, $8 per user per month. So if you have 50 to 100 employees, um, your investment would be 4,800 to 9,500, add 100 to 500, 8,500 to 42,000, 36,000 to 72,000. I'm presenting this because this is the market price and for everyone on this call, whether you have two employees or you have 10,000, this resource is free. So please keep that in mind. It's not a cheap resource. It's a high quality. We are trying to disrupt the marketplace by proving we can keep your workforce trained for no more than $8 a month per employee, but at the same time, the state's made a huge investment on your behalf. So keep that in mind as you think about utilizing it. And now I'm just gonna Joe, share- a couple, Joe, a couple of quick questions and we'll have more, but uh, is the implementation free? Yes, absolutely free. Okay, and what if you have less than 50 employees? Oh, you could have, under this initiative in Indiana, um, you could have one or two or three. We don't care. Um, we'll set you up and get you going. There's no minimum. Okay. We will have, uh, there are a few more, but go ahead with the presentation. All right. I'm going to wrap it up here. So kind of in closing, everybody, you know, three things you can do with this is create, grow, retain. So solve your biggest problem first take any human being who's at the front door willing to work and don't turn them away because they have no skills create learning paths that align with the basic skills you need to let them walk through the door and into the company once you get them have incumbent worker training and if you do that your retention will improve so very quickly some linkedin statistics for our manufacturing partners the competition is doing this. 90% of the companies in this country offer digital learning. 94% of employees would say they would stay at a company if the company invests in them. So back to, hey, boss, I'm ready to learn. That is real and it's costly for you. Engagement, 56% of employees want their boss to say, hey, employee, I'd like you to learn A, B, and C. It makes them feel better. It makes them feel needed. It makes them feel important. And then 58% want to learn at their own pace. Back to what we talked about earlier, 68% want to learn at work. And 50% want to learn at the point that they need to learn. And you cannot do that with OJT. You cannot do that with Classroom. This makes that all possible. So if you're interested in signing up, please go to 180skills.com slash Indiana. Um, there is a very, very simple form we ask companies to fill out, basic company information, name, address, contact, somebody to call, and we will, within 24 hours, reach out to you, set up an implementation meeting. Um, but again, everybody, this is a really valuable, high-quality resource 
the cost is zero. There's no risk, um, I think, in these times. And with the issues facing companies and workforce development, um, we're just hopeful that you will take advantage of it. So, um, Dave, I am done. And if you have questions, would love to field those and see if we can answer them. Uh, yes, there are several, and it's also a reminder, if there's any more, go ahead and submit them here in the next few minutes. But a couple uh, that should be quick answers first. Um, how long is the program free for employers? At present, it's free through June of 2022. Okay. And, oh, go yeah, ahead. And depending upon um, you know how this goes, we're working with the state to see if they'll extend that. If not, uh, we will be working on uh, some kind of a special offer for participating in the end employees. We, we we won't let this get turned off because cost is a barrier. So, okay. Um, is this available for my employees in other states? If so, who do I contact? Um, it's not free in other states and if you're looking to implement this at other facilities, uh, please just send an email to info at 180skills.com or go to our website, 180skills.com, and you'll find um, contact info, demo request. We're happy to meet with you and talk about your other facilities. Okay. This is a follow-up to the earlier one about uh, civil service for government employees. How should we communicate with 180 Skills to request a civil service course be developed? Um, again, send an email. Um, you can send it to me. My email is Joe K, J O E K, as in kite, at 180 Skills. Or go to the website and just simply fill out the contact form with your question and we'll get right back with you. Um, we would love to talk about building uh, courses for that topic. Okay. Um, is training offered in alternate languages, Spanish and French specifically? Um, that's a great question. About a third of the library is in Spanish, German, Czech, Aryan, French, soon Indonesian and Vietnamese. Uh, we're working to complete the balance of the library in Spanish. Um, we don't have a current plan to translate the rest of it into French, but if that's needed, um, certainly something we'd love to talk about. Again, contact us through the website and we'll see what your needs are and if we can accommodate that. Okay. Any idea if you will develop a program that is healthcare based? We specifically need certification training for nurses aides. Um, that's also a, a great and timely question. Um, yes, we have in our build plan to begin healthcare courses. At present, we're working with the state of Mississippi in the initiative I described earlier. And I would ask the, whoever sent the question, please contact us directly on your specific needs so we make sure and cover those topics. Okay. Um, next question, are any of the courses accredited through any of the state colleges or universities? Um, at present, no. Ivy Tech does offer some of our classes for credit and we could, uh, but it's predominantly the aerospace curricula that we built. Um, we do have out-of-state partners who, are, um, who will award credit to the learners, community colleges and other states. Okay, um, next, if you are only using the system for a small number of people, do you have to pay for the entire workforce? Uh, no, there's no charge here at all, zero. So there's no paying. Um, and you know, I wanna back up to the previous question, Dave. Um, mm -hmm. I, completely, I completely overlooked, um, Indiana Wesleyan University is offering credit on our library. So there is credit from Indiana schools in Indiana Wesleyan. Um, so again, more information on that, please contact us directly and we can uh, bring IWU into the conversation. But they have for the past year been offering credit for skills training. 
Okay. I think the answer to this one is yes, but I'll ask it. We have employees in North Carolina and Texas, so we would pay for those employees, correct? That is correct. Okay. Uh, I think a couple more, unless any others come in. Um, you offer an anti-corruption or any Burberry prevention or sales ethics training. We do not at the present time, no. Um, Okay, and then one from earlier, I think it may have already been addressed, but I'll ask it again anyway in case uh, people missed it. Is the 180 skills product aimed at manufacturing only or is it also aimed at service industries? No, we, we have a lot of clients who are service industry based. And I'll go back to the workplace skills, soft skills, customer service, you know, software skills. Um, we have a lot to offer to service based clients. Okay, a um, couple more here. Uh, if this is a kind of a clarification of an earlier question, if I sign up for my out of state employees, do I have to pay for the whole facility or just the people who I have using it? Uh, you would, we don't require, I mean, our typical minimum with an employer is a $4,800 investment, 50 people minimum. Um, you know, so we're talking about $400 a month to serve a facility. That would be the entry level point um, for anyone out of state. But yes, you would have to pay for the out of state facilities. But we don't require you to sign up everybody in the company. It's up to you with a minimum of 50. I hope that makes sense. Okay. Um... I am confused on free to Indiana, but yet we saw a pricing list. I presented the pricing list just so that you understood the value of what Indiana is giving to you. Um, so it wasn't intended that anyone on this call has to pay. It is free. I just simply wanted you all to know that at the minimum, you're getting a $5,000 gift from the state, depending upon your organization size, the value of that this resource could be significantly more. So again, not asking anyone to pay anything for what we've discussed today within the state of Indiana. Okay, a um, couple more quickly. Does your LMS integrate with Pluralsight and Linux, or Linux, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Uh, I'm now above my pay grade, but we, uh, being an SAP product, I would say the answer is most likely yes, but I would have to connect you with our IT staff to discuss what that would entail. Okay. Um, and I think this answer is yes, but I'll ask it again or ask it anyway. Can in individuals take courses on their own, not necessarily through an employer? Yes. This is also free to all Indiana residents. And um, if you go to our website homepage, there's a section on the homepage about Indiana. There's a button for residents. If you click that, it will direct you to the enrollment page. Um, the enrollment page is actually on the governor's website. Um, under your next steps, indiana.org, but go to our webpage, we'll get you there. And it's a simple sign up, first name, last name, county of residence is all we need. And you will immediately be enrolled um, in the learning system and have access to everything I talked about today, the library. Okay, I think uh, two more and then we'll, we'll wrap up. If they are, if sorry, if they are remote employees living or working in another state, are they covered under the free program? Our facilities and all but two employees are located in Indiana. Um, you know, Dave, I would have to ask your staff. I would think so, but um, can we confirm that with DWD? That's a new uh, question we haven't had. Sure, I'll, I'll provide these questions to our folks who are who are working on that um, and I don't there's one more so I think we'll wrap up with this as the final question if there's any others that come in uh, someone will get back to you offline but uh, please again tell us how to get signed up if we are interested 
Um, let me just show you all. So I'll close with, if you go to our website, and you scroll down about halfway on the home page, there is a black banner um, with Connecticut and Indiana. If you're an employer, click on the For Employers button. The URL is 180skills.com slash Indiana. There's an overview of the program, and then all you need to do is fill out this simple form, and we will be in touch most likely within 24 hours. So it's that simple, 180skills.com slash Indiana, fill out this Indiana employer training request form, and um, LaDonna and her team will be in touch and meet with you, discuss your needs, and if you, know, if you wanna move forward, schedule an implementation. You can also download our course catalog from this page, and um, it's that simple. So, Well, great. Uh, that was Joe Kitterman. Joe, thank you. And I know LaDonna Sloan was with him as well, so we appreciate your time today. We'll go ahead and wrap up uh, as we are at noon or maybe a minute or two after. Appreciate uh, everyone's uh, participation today. Again, a recording will be coming your way via email, um, I believe around 11 a.m. tomorrow morning, so you'll be able to access that if you want to go back and review anything. Um, but with that, we will again thank our presenters. I encourage you to check out 180 Skills and have a great afternoon.